obviously uh, they did enough to keep him there. And, you know, I think it's great that he, um, that he's staying there he's committed to that franchise and, you know, and that's what it's all about. So, um, but I don't think um, my situation, his situation, we have it's no similarities and it's just, it's totally different. All right, let's welcome an NBA champion, Kendrick Perkins. Yeah. Perk, Those always good to see you. I will get to you in just up. a moment, sir. Right? He does. He looks like a young pup, and I like that he's protecting himself, taking things seriously. Uh, Stephen A., what do you think LeBron's really saying here in terms of Giannis's contract? That the situations were different, and it's not just about basketball. I mean, I think you have to remember um, there was a lot of stuff going on in Cleveland before LeBron uh, departed. Uh, there were teammates who betrayed him. There were people who were chirping and talking behind his back all the time. He didn't feel like he had a true brotherhood. Um, and because of that, that had a lot to do with why he left. Now, obviously, the, the, one would anticipate he was going to leave anyway because uh, being in his hometown, having never departed uh, from that area, being born and raised in Akron, Ohio, playing in Cleveland, he might have wanted, you know, new horizons and experienced different things. But it was certainly made easier for him because of some of that chirping that was taking place. And it was witnessed, it was evidenced by once he arrived in Miami. If you recall, it wasn't just because he was a pariah and what have you because of how he had departed Cleveland and sort of ravaged the local economy and everything else because he was that significant to them. You saw people crying in the streets and different things like that. But when he got to Miami, Dwayne Wade didn't leave his side. He did every press conference. Kendrick Perkins, you remember this? You know, he did every press conference with Dwayne Wade. Uh, Dwayne Wade was by his side all the time because there was this need for a brotherhood. And Dwayne Wade, being a big brother to him, really, really had to go about the business of showing him that he was some, that he had somebody by his side that had his back on at all times, that he never had to worry about compromising that level of loyalty that LeBron was lacking at that particular moment in time. And that was the difference. When you look at Giannis in Milwaukee, these guys love him. Uh, they wear it on their sleeve. They don't just marvel at his greatness as an athlete and a player, but they marvel at him as a person. They love Giannis, uh, and, and they wanted him there, and he feels like it's a family. It's his home. LeBron did not feel that way about Cleveland. So when he says it was a completely different between him and Giannis, he's not really just talking about basketball. He's talking about things on the outside as well. That's what I took from it. Yeah, that, that's interesting um, and, 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 you know, good background about what was happening at the time. Let me tell you what I heard LeBron saying, not, not obviously dismissing that's what, that what's underneath it are the relationships, but sure. I remember at the time in Cleveland when LeBron was pushing them to get, make the team better, to give them a realistic shot. I'm forgetting who it was. There was a trade uh, that people wanted for Amari Stoudemire, I remember, and the Cavs were going to have to give up some stuff that they didn't want to give up. And I remember thinking Amari Stoudemire at the time was a scoring machine. And LeBron wasn't playing with any other All-Stars. And it's not like Stoudemire was an MVP. He was just, you know, he's an All-Star. And I remember thinking, they won't give up what for an All-Star for LeBron? He, like, Michael Jordan, whatever you want to say about him, it took him, it, they took a while, but they eventually put a team around him. And you could see it building, right? The right coach and Scottie Pippen and, and Grant, and it was building. LeBron was sitting there waiting like, you guys aren't getting this done. I understand Magic Johnson's born into a league with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Good for him. And Kobe Bryant gets Shaquille O'Neal. Good for him. And at least they built around Jordan. What are you doing for me? So LeBron took matters into his own hands, from which he was vilified. And he said, okay, if they're not going to build a team around me, I'll go build a team, right? I think that's what, that's what I heard him saying. Giannis is in a situation where whether they're trying the best way or not, they are trying. They are bringing him in help. Whether it's enough help or not, we will see. But they're trying to build and keep him. And LeBron's like, they weren't doing that for me. Well, well, Stephen A. Max, I feel like both of you guys came up with some great points, but this is what I think LeBron James was saying. When LeBron James was drafted by the Cleveland Cavaliers, they handed him the keys to the Mercedes Benz, and he had to just drive the organization, meaning he had to teach himself how to, uh, how to you know, how to, val how to uh, park. He had to teach himself how to get on the highway and use his blinkers. When the Bucks drafted Giannis, 
Giannis got the opportunity to go to driver's ed. He got the chance to learn how to use the windshield wipers and the left signal and learn how to, you know, ease on his brake when he was coming up on the stop sign. So with that being said, it's one word that comes to mind. Expectation. Expectations. LeBron James' expectations were greater than probably any other player in NBA history. Giannis didn't have the same expectations as LeBron James. So when you look at LeBron's situation and when he chose to go to Miami, he went there for one reason, one reason alone, and that was to try to win championships because LeBron knew that if he didn't win championships early in his career, no, despite all the individual accolades that he would achieve, that he would have been considered a failure. And so he knew that he had to put himself in the best position possible to win a championship or two early at, or at that stage of his career. Giannis, on the other hand, is not having that much pressure or that much expectations. You're talking about a guy that went that was drafted number 15, a guy that was had time to, to grow and develop uh, uh, and turn out to be an awesome player. LeBron James was drafted number one, called the chosen one. Since day one, he stepped foot into the door. The expectations were high on him to win, and not just win in regular seasons and win 60-plus games, but to deliver championships. And when I hear LeBron say those words about the situation was different, that's what I took from it. It is different because of the expectations. Well, thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.